House GOP leaders just wrapped up a news conference addressing their new health care bill. Congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes was in that news conference, and she joins us now. So, Nancy, uh, the speaker taking a few questions there, but again, sounding very, very confident that this new bill would pass the House. Uh, he says he's confident, but clearly behind the, the scenes they're scrambling, Vlad, because you've got uh, this group of conservative lawmakers essentially right now saying no way, no how, that they cannot get behind the bill. And what was so interesting in this press conference was hearing Speaker Ryan make the case for why this is a conservative health care plan and why those lawmakers should actually be very excited about the plan that's been put on the table. He's essentially ticked through all the features of the plan, everything about Obamacare that's being done away with, and he said this is a conservative's dream. He made another interesting point, which was that the Republican Party is now moving from being an opposition party to a governing party and that these members need to understand that they have different obligations now. It's not enough anymore just to vote against everything. They're now in the driver's seat and they need to prove to the American people that they can drive. Uh, and so essentially the message there to conservatives is, look, you may not get everything you want. This may not be perfect, but this is the consensus plan and you need to get on board for the good of the party. Yeah. You know, what I thought was sort of interesting is uh, we've heard them talk about this uh, plan now a few, for a few times. And uh, basically what they did is checkmark all the stuff that they had already listed before. Nothing new, no new information, just uh, reiterating what we've already heard from Speaker Ryan and, so, and some of the architects of the uh, this piece of legislation and I wondered how much of uh, how much they were thinking about not only influencing members of the party who are critical but maybe the American people they're they're having to do a, a sales pitch on both fronts and Marie because uh, you know what they're hoping is that if they can uh, sell this plan to Americans more broadly that then those voters will put pressure on their lawmakers to get behind the bill as well um, the big problem when it comes to selling this plan however is that they're still missing some big details like how much it's going to cost how they're going to pay for it and there's still this open question of uh, how far they're willing to go to negotiate with conservative members in order to get them on board. Uh, in the beginning, the president was saying, hey, I'm open to negotiation. This is a starting point. But then Republican leaders suggested that that's not necessarily that helpful because then basically what you do is you open up this entire bill for negotiation and it becomes this open-ended process where conservative lawmakers think that they can keep asking for more and more. So now the message that you heard from Speaker Ryan uh, up here a minute ago is this is the plan, this is what the president supports, this is what GOP members support, and by the way, he pointed out, we got feedback from Republican members for a year before we crafted this plan. We asked all of you, he's saying to these conservative members, what you wanted, and this is what we came up with. Um, and so the, the message is get on board now because you had your chance to register your concerns before we came up with this. Nancy, I'm curious about uh, President Trump's tweet yesterday uh, to Rand Paul. At one point, he tweeted, I feel sure that my friend at Rand Paul will come along with the new and great health care program because he knows Obamacare is a disaster. But Rand Paul has tweeted that this bill will not pass the House because he's calling it Obamacare light. Uh, what are you hearing? Mm -hmm. Well, Rand Paul is certainly one of the most vocal and most visible opponents of this plan. He's one of those conservatives who uh, desperately wants the Republican Party to go ahead and repeal the entire Obamacare plan first, rip it out by the roots, and then go about the process of replacing it. That would give conservative lawmakers a lot more leverage, uh, but Republican leaders say it would throw the insurance market into chaos and it would leave uh, a lot of Americans wondering what comes next for their coverage. And so uh, that is not the route that Republican leaders want to go. But conservative members say, hey, look, when we were uh, when, when, when we didn't control the White House, we voted many times to rip Obamacare out by the roots. And it passed overwhelmingly. It got support from every single Republican only to die at President Obama's desk. Why can't we do that again? And it gets back to that point that Speaker Ryan was making up here today, which is we are no longer an opposition party. We now have the responsibility 
to govern. We've got one shot to replace Obamacare, and this is the only train leaving the station. If you're not on it, then basically you're voting for the status quo. And all of this is happening while the clock is ticking. The president wants to see a piece of legislation that he can sign really within a month. That's right. And Republican leaders want that as well, because they know that insurers are making their decisions within the next couple of months about their premiums, about the plans that they're offering for the following year. And all of these insurers are watching to see what Congress comes up with, what Congress does. And the longer that this remains in limbo, the more difficult it is for insurers to come up with their plans and the longer that, um, frankly, voters uh, remain in limbo as well. And that's why you see Republicans moving so quickly on this. They bashed Democrats for years, you remember, for uh, writing the Obamacare law in the dead of night and saying you've got to pass it before you can see what's in it. But now they're doing another version of that. They are uh, essentially asking members in two relevant committees to start debating the bill today and voting on it as early as the end of this week, even though they are still missing some critical information that lawmakers typically like to know before they uh, make up their minds on a piece of legislation legislation, things like how much it's going to cost and where the money's coming from. Yep, indeed. Uh, not just the lawmakers that want to know about the answers to those questions. Nancy Cordes, thank you so much.